Good morning YouTube, this is Derek or Lake 101 and welcome back to my channel. And today's video is going to be something that I discussed the other day in my unboxing video. The review for the Pathfinder Adventure Path Skull and Shackles Volume 1, The Wormwood Mutiny. <clears throat> now first things first, I want to say that I'm very excited about this uh, video because I have wanted to read this book for so long. And I read it in a day. It was a wonderful read. And initially, for those of you that watched my unboxing video, I thought it was a little longer, but it's not. I compared it to my other APs that I have, and it's only the same 92 pages. And to make a long story short, let's just get, for those of you who want to know, is this worth a buy or not, let's just give you my final star rating, and then for those of you wanting to wait around, we'll get into the details. So for those of you who just want to get out of here, is the Wormwood Mutiny worth a buy? Should you go out and get it? Yes or no? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I get it four and a half stars, 4.5 out of 5. So, there you go. Those of you who just want that, you can go ahead and just stop the video, go out and get it. It's definitely worth it. It's got to be one of my favorite APs and favorite openings to an AP so far. So, for those of you that have stuck around and want to know more about it and why I have a 4.5 and not a 5 for this opening of Adventure Path, we'll get down into that. So, as I already said, AP is 92 pages long, and 46 of those pages are quote-unquote story. However, when you actually get into it, uh, within the very first couple pages, on page 4, or 6 rather, you will note there are only three parts to this adventure path. Now, I don't know if that's something that's recent, because I didn't pick up Carrion Crown or Jade Regent adventure path. But I do own like the Curse of the Crimson Throne and stuff, and I remember those had six parts in each adventure. So maybe that's something that they've tailored uh, as the APs have gone on, but it just seems shorter. <clears throat> um, eight pages of those 46 are dedicated to NPCs and just giving you a layout of who, what they're about. And there's actually an entire NPC gallery that mentions some of those same NPCs later on. So I feel like those pages could have been used a little bit better. Um, for those of you that don't know uh, what the part of the AP is about, is you're press ganged into service aboard a pirate ship called the Wormwood, and over the course of 20 days, <clears throat> you have to live the light of like a, uh, a swab on deck, and you know do all like the really shitty jobs that nobody likes to do. However, as you read the AP you find that there are actually only, I think it's 12 days, maybe 12 to 16 days that are actually charted out with important things to do. That leaves other gaps where there isn't really any event going on that come down to completely up to the players and you as a GM to come up with things to do. However, there is no suggested you know, things to run during this day, it's just do whatever, let the players do their daily job, you know, meet NPCs, etc. It's just kind of like a, hey, hands off the reins, we're letting you do whatever kind of thing, which makes it uh, slightly less accessible to newer GMs than some of the other APs. So there's less guidance in that factor in the fact that it's kind of, you know, taking the hands off the reins, going more of a sandboxy kind of mode. And for me, what it also holds it back is, in the, uh, for those of you that do know, or have had other um, APs, there's always a little bestiary in the back. However, for me, there's almost nothing of use in this AP. The, typically, the bestiary section has monsters that are included over the course of the adventure path. However, in terms of Wormwood, Wormwood Mutiny, none of these monsters ever make an appearance in the actual adventure for the first, uh, for this first book, really. So the first thing you have is a tide pool dragon, which is a tiny dragon, and can be used as a familiar. <clears throat> you know, so if you've got a person that has a familiar, sure, you can give them a tide pool dragon. Um, CR3, but, um, Aside from that, it doesn't show up anywhere. Now, this is one that is, I find kind of upsetting because it's called an Inktalus, which is basically um, it's a Nautilus-looking thing, and it 
attaches onto people and basically controls them like a puppet master. Pretty awesome looking, right? Pretty cool sounding, um, pretty awesome stuff that you could use with it because it's only a tiny aberration and as a CR2, however, when it latches onto something, obviously you're changing the CR. <clears throat> so I see a lot of potential in this, but again, not used. However, the most frustrating part in terms of the bestiary is this, Kelpie's Wrath. This amazing looking pirate ship with a giant skull uh, on the map, or on the, the foredeck, is completely useless, to be honest, because it's a CR-15, we're talking level 1 characters, and to make matters worse, this ship is a herald of Besmara, um, the goddess of pirates, basically. And the ship is completely intelligent and serves at her bidding. Now, I've read The Adventures to Come for the, the, the spoiler section, as it's called, in terms of what will happen over the course of this adventure path. And there's no real reason for this to be in here that I can see. I mean, I'm not going to run this this ship unless for some reason players go out of their way to try to besiege Besmara for aid, and this would be like literally like a hundred on a percentile roll for this thing to show up and help them. <clears throat> but it just it seems a little out of place for a first section of an, a level 1 AP section. And the last thing is Pirate Familiars, uh, which is pretty cool, except for the fact that it's already been released and expanded upon on the Paizo blog on their website and includes more options than even are presented here so I've then already printed this out and had it added to the uh, players handbook for the campaign when I run it so you basically have a bestiary of unused monsters added to the back which I felt was kind of inappropriate I mean typically you see the monsters that use they at least make an appearance in the AP but not so here so it's those three things that really hold this AP back for me, just a, just a little bit, is it's it's short. I can definitely see players running through these 20 days like like that if you're really keeping the role playing low and just trying to go through it as quickly as possible. Um, but I mean that's not really the point, is it? You're supposed to be having fun being a pirate, Arr. but for those players that are like, oh, I just want to get to the combat, it's going to be over really quick. This section, this book, first book is going to be done. Like, in no time. Um, it's going to be difficult for like really beginner DMs to run this AP because of how hands off it gets and that bestiary that it's pretty much useless. You know, I enjoy the addition of crazy monsters in the back normally but this one kind of was a disappointment for me in terms of the, best, the bestiary. But overall despite all that I love this AP so far it's great I plan on running it it's gonna be really role-playing intensive and it's gonna be completely awesome to be honest uh, I can see this going a lot of different ways uh, I can see the NPCs all getting really uh, fleshed out and different voices and characters and mannerisms to be presented to the players so if you're looking for a really high role-playing intensive really fun different take on an adventure, I highly, highly recommend the Skull of Jackals Adventure Path, Volume 1, The Wormwood Mutiny, 4.5 stars. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later, and I'll probably be doing another video on Skull and Jackals, how I'm going to revise it for my homeworld, the Kai Grimm campaign setting. So be looking forward to that. See you guys.